<clears throat> morning, Duane van Wijk, very mark. Uh, good morning to Neil Duplessis. Good morning to scroll, please. Let's see. Sante Thomas, hello, Sante. Shane uh, Sunil, MMI, welcome. We've got Vivian, good crowd. So I, I assume everybody can hear me? Bessie? Okay. Guys, can everybody hear me? Yes. Bessie? Yes, I can okay. hear you. <clears throat> right, so guys, thank you for joining. I'm going to steal one hour out of your Friday morning. Hopefully we can we can drive some engagement and we can at least learn one or two things about online merchandising. So this morning is a few guidelines. It is not a training session. It is not a session about conversion rate optimization. It is all about the basics, which from time to time, I browse our client sites and sometimes you know, we can do better with the basics. So, so with any further ado, let's start. Just, just quickly, uh, I'm Kevin. I've met most of you guys. If not, I head operations for Vimo in South Africa, and I'm joined by uh, Stephen Herter. He's, um, he's one of our e-commerce consultants, and I'm sure most of you have worked and engaged and consulted with Stephen. Smart guy. He, he will be taking the notes in, in terms of just a bit of um, housekeeping rules, uh, Stephen will be taking notes um, afterwards. Any type of questions, there's going to be a section for for Q and A. But but the way we drive this webinar is highly interactive. You do not need to wait for um, the, the Q and A session. Please feel free to to ask questions, to comment, to engage, and 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 um, yeah, let's participate. Okay, so. It, Quickly about the agenda. Let's define online merchandising. Then we're gonna jump into where to merchandise, to really understand what is a merchandising funnel. And, and unfortunately, Ruan, our UX expert, can't join us, but I wanted to give him a masterclass on how to design these funnels. Um, then we're gonna look at merchandising types, all the tactics. Um, and I'm mostly gonna focus on what is available by default in Magento. We're not gonna so much focus this morning on AI and best of breed uh, cloud services and, and, and yes, those things are important, but, but let's jump back to the basics, right? So it's all about Magento functionality. And then we're gonna close up with some key considerations and a lacquer little Q and A session. If I go too fast, just raise your hand. Um, Stephen is, is monitoring, and um, if you don't want to participate by a voice, you can just hit the text button, right? Okay, so what is online merchandising? The theory says it's the act or the art of promoting products at the right position to the right person at the right time. It sounds very complicated to do, but with one aim in mind, that is to raise the likelihood of this product being bought or are selling to, to, to the customer or the, or the customer Ruan. buying from us. Uh, Rieta, can you just mute please on your side? Um, Microphone? Unless you want to ask a question. <laughs> All good. Select again. Amrish? Yeah. Or the headphones? Can you just mute Amrish for us, please? Nothing. Right, um, so online merchandising is very, very similar to what you guys have been doing for ages in your physical retail stores. It's the props, right? It's at the door. It's the right um, height in terms of eye level. It's the right grouping. It's the right pyramids. It's all these things um, also apply to online. And because sometimes we think too much of the systems and um, we, we kind of neglect that right product in the right position. And, and ultimately, this is how we're gonna drive more revenue. So it's all about maximizing sales. And you can only do that if you apply a bit of thinking, if you apply a bit of planning, if you're organizing. And if, if you're working the shop, 
then you'll be maximizing the sales. Just leaving it to default product positions, ah, we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot. We can do much better. So guys, merchandising is not just about product experience. It's not just about the product information. I'm going to say it's more about the product at the right position, the relevant product at the right position. And I'm, we're going to show you how to achieve better um, product positions in the session. Um, yeah. And, and, and let's jump back into Magento functionality. There's, there's tons and tons of good stuff, which uh, sometimes we neglect. We focus on all the heavy, the heavy lifting. Um, during the stabilization, we, we kind of neglect all the basic features. Which, which basically brings me to what is a modern customer journey? If, if we really want to understand merchandising, we need to understand the customer journey, right? Now, there's a lot of theory about how the funnel um, actually um, progresses. Uh, so this, this, this funnel. For this little chat this morning, I'm breaking this down into three parts, right? So firstly, it's all about engagement, and that is interest. Uh, so if there's an interest in a product or there's an interest in a service or something, then there's a consideration phase and then there's converting purchase. So, so typically we, we guide our clients and say, you merchandise for engagement or you merchandise for revenue. And you must understand where in the journey you want to do what and what it actually entails. If we say we're going to merchandise at the consideration phase, which pages are we referring to? I'm going to jump into that just now. But ultimately, guys, when we enrich products, when we place products, when we grew products, right? Um, we need to understand where, what we want to do on the landing page because this is typically interest, right? And now we move further on to, to, to the detail page and this is serious consideration. What is important there? We're going to jump into a few elements and then, of course, adding, adding to cart and hitting that buy now button. This is ultimately what we want to achieve with merchandising, right? So we have interest, we have consideration, we have purchase. We say we merchandise for engagement. It's, 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 it's the shouting, I, I have value, buy me. This, this is good for you. And, and then of course, um, the revenue. So, so what does that mean? The orange block on the left side, engagement. Typically, these are the, the pages on the site. These are the areas on the site, which you really need to consider, right? So normally engagement starts with a landing page or a home page. Now we want to enter to the site. So there's multiple entry points. Typically there's two main entry points. Um, and what we want to achieve here, we quickly want to move a client from interest to consideration. Consideration is mostly on a category page, right? Consideration is, is, is typically more research orientated. So, so um, blog pages. Um, so normally pages, we kind of just take a template, we put on our CI and the product feeds comes in and, and we don't really work the space. So working with space to, to, to rage engagement, to drive it further to consideration, definitely the menu, so underrated. Um, we can do so much more on the menu, especially with your topography and your product funnels. Um, I, I feel, especially from Bimo side and the consulting team uh, these days uh, are, are very much focused on, on good product funnels. We're going to jump into a few um, demo sites and I'll show you examples of, of good menu structures. Right. The search. Guys, 50% of all conversion happens on search, and this is where you really can merchandise. Um, so when you hit that quick search in the header, that your, your, your promotions are there, your value-added products are there, your best sellers takes up position one, two, three. And all these tactics which we are preaching, and all the insights that is readily available across multiple databases, we need to work that. So when somebody hits that search, the, the best trend, uh, trending products, the best sellers, and or you know how to work the shop, but we don't all, always see 
all the intelligence, all the insights we know about our business, transposing into that position one, two, three. Again, we'll jump into a, a bit of demo later. Homepage landing pages, guys, with Magento and with CMS. Um, we're going to show you what is a dynamic block. We're going to show you how to, to insert product widgets. But there's basically a product widget for every question all your clients can ask. So normally when you walk into the store, where is this? How is this? Um, what, what pair to that? All of those questions with the product widgets we can answer. Okay, right. Category page, guys. The most important in terms of the consideration funnel. If you're really, really serious about merchandising for revenue, we need to get the listing pages right. And, and this is where I have a biggest gripe. And then we're going to jump into one or two category pages on what not to do. Um, but when you, you, when you land on that product range, this is where we really need to apply ourselves. But those first six positions above the fold is prime real estate. It's like, it's like having real estate in Bazula or, or all these top estates in South Africa. You must really use that. Um, blog pages, again, storytelling, selling, these days, it's, it's kind of uh, one experience and we're not milking it enough. We, we're not leveraging that. So this is all engagement. This is all getting the intention. It's all creating the intention, right? The badges, the on promo, the best sellers, the trending in store, uh, loss of, a, of, of, of a, uh, best selling ranges. And then we say, okay, if we do this good, naturally, we'll merchandise for revenue. And the key considerations when you mentioned us for revenue is basically your detail page and your shopping cart page. This is, this is where what we call frictionless e-commerce. So the, the product experience on the detail page should be fantastic. Um, we'll jump on what to do and not to do. And then very much neglected is, is the shopping cart. The shopping cart is not just a summary of your slippy, of your toll slip. Um, this, this is where we can really drive more, more value and more revenue. Right, so this is where to merchandise, typically on your site. We, we normally do not um, skimp on, on product detail page. Uh, we normally don't, don't skimp on, 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 on listing pages or category pages, but all the rest, prime real estate, we, we can do much better. So Tiri, Tiri is asking a question quickly. She's asking if it's M1 or, or M2 dependent. This is Magento. So we can do this in Magento 1 and we can do this in Magento 2. The user interface in admin, slightly different, but let, let's move through, through the static slides so we can jump into products and sites. Um, and also from a Magento enterprise or Magento commerce versus the open source or community. Guys, if you, if you want to do this, we can enable you. It can be default functionality, it can be vinyl code, it can be third party code. We can sort you out. Right, very important slide and, and I'm gonna go through this very slowly. I, I term this methods to merchandise. So, so if, we, if we consult and, and we work on a daily basis with our clients, right? And <clears throat> we look at how merchandising takes place on the site. Most of the time, it's some type of automated um, logic or routine or, or integration, right? Most of the time, it is best of breed third party services. So, so we are aware of Nosto being a fantastic recommendation engine, Clever being a world-class search and recommendation engine, Dot .digital or um, uh, the old dot mailer being world class at email merchandising, right? So, so if, if you a tier one merchant, and typically tier one, we classify twenty thousand products in the catalog, twenty thousand active SKUs and more. Uh, so, of course, AI becomes important. Of course, automation becomes important because, because you can't you can't deal and handle these vast ranges of 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 of, of, of catalogs. But but. 75% of our clients, right, um, typically is, is reliant on manual online merchandising on site and, um, or 
functionality Magento offers, which can automate a bit of the manual work. So I want to focus today on the things you can do manually to merchandise. And if you can't do it manually, if, if the ranges and the catalog is a little bit too big, what does Magento, the basics, Magento 1, Magento 2, open source enterprise, regardless. What, what, we can we, what can we do in Magento? So the four methods, just to summarize. For a very long time, we've been working with shop manually. So we sort positions on a category page. We do our product relations. So the related products, the upsells, the cross-sells, we, we work that manually. Uh, we've been working our click-through banners. Um, since forever, we inject fixed widgets and we use a CMS tool. So we can use Vimo CMS or Magento CMS, but we build our own pages with click clickable links, with, with product widgets and then what, what, we, what we can get better with and a bit of consulting and sometimes yes, there's a bit of code optimization or at least a bit of consideration how many crons and how many jobs in the background runs. But with a bit of thinking, a bit of configuration, we can help to set auto categories. I'm gonna, and we're gonna jump into, into, into a product demo. Visual Merchandiser is the most unutilized tool in Magento. It can change your world. Auto relation, relational products. So typically the product relations, you know, we curate. So there's a product owner or there's a buyer or a merchandiser that knows the business very well. And they pair and link products and related products together. Sometimes that's not, uh, that, that can be scripted. And then Magenta out of the box gives us an, an auto engine for this. Badge manager, what's on promo, what's the best seller, what's trending. We've been doing that um, since forever. Magento can do that for you. I'm sorry. Right. And I'm, I'm going to say the saddest story in, in the history of e-commerce is the underutilization of grouped and bundled product functionality in Magento. E even our tier one merchants, right? The guys who are with PIM systems, the guys who have heavy ERP system, systems in the background, um, still cannot do or can, but it's underutilized in terms of using hard bundles and group products. If you want to move the needle on average order value, group and bundle products, most lowest hanging fruit. So the old concepts of retail, loss leader, uh, and, and, and these type of things, this is how, what we're going to cross the bridge with when it comes um, with using group and bundle products and the recommendations. Recommendations, it is in Magento. Now what we also need to do, we also need to um, kind of just acknowledge that US online merchants, uh, on, uh, e-commerce managers that, that owns the target, the online revenue targets, that all the KPIs is on your head. Typically, the ERP plays a role as well. So, so we will get sales data, typically from our point of sale system, from the ERP system. And that will determine, especially the, the, the order and positions of products across all the buying um, journeys in the relevant pages. Um, typically, we will get the trending, absolutely the promotions management lives typically in the ERP. And that basically, cuts off a lot of good functionality in Magento. So it's, it's so it's so important to find that balance and to understand that any conventional point of sale system, even the modern ERPs can never do proper merchandising like a tool like Magento, your, your e-commerce engine. The, the, these, these back office systems, they, they, they don't know client facing, they don't know customer facing, they don't know how to operate as a salesperson. So, so, so we, we need to get out of a groove where all the old archive, um, I'd rather say, all the other business systems um, that, that determines the, the experience we offer online. We must get out of this little, yeah, routine or, or, or rut. So these are the methods to merchandise, manual, magento functionality, typically from other uh, business systems, and then all the online best of breed systems these days. That, that, that is changing our worlds. 
Right. Today, like I've said, let's focus on manual and, and Magento functionality. Now, what I've realized, when we talk on-site online merchandising, most, most of the tactics are related to some type of recommendation. So I call this recommendations for recommendations, right? So of course we talk personalization. I'll touch briefly on personalization, but online merchandising is, is, is mostly about recommendations. It is about um, personalization and under, we can do much more with email. Now, if, if we talk about recommendations again, when you work with Ruan and the UX team or your internal departments and you're cutting a promo or you're planning this um, fantastic deal or you're laying out a new category page or, or, or a range, there needs to be proper planning, thinking, consulting around it, right? So one, one thing typically says, okay, what is the mindset of our customer? when they engage on our website. So if you really want to merchandise and you want to recommend, you need to understand the mindset of a client. Now, what we do, or not we, but our UX department, and if they're not doing it, give him a few, call me, I'll sort it out for you. Um, but on the homepage, homepage or landing page, this is typically the first page where I experience your business, I experience your brand, your range, and what you have for me. So, so the mindset is, I'm new, what do you have? Show me quickly, or I'm out of here, All right? So this is typically the bounce rate on, on Google Analytics. And again, all the insights from all the tools. I know it's only eight hours in a day, and I know we've got fires galore on a daily basis. But, but it, it, it is good practice or, or outsource this to us or work with Stefan and, and Branko and the team to, to help you mine the insights. If you spend a little bit of time in Google Analytics and you see which pages, which URLs shows the highest, highest bounce rate, then typically we're not answering this. I'm new. What do you have? Show me quickly or I'm out of here. I'm bouncing out of here. All right. So that's the mindset. Another mindset typically on a homepage or landing page is that of, I've just returned to your site. I was browsing a few other products. Oh, just, just put me back on, on, on the path. I just, wanna, I, I just wanna, again, hit the ground running where I left off the, the previous time. Um, so, so, so I would classify those, those two mindsets as most important for the landing page, right? So what should you consider then? And this is now all, all out of the box. On this landing page or homepage, quickly show, okay, I've got top sellers. Quickly show, this is trending in my business, right? And for the second question, this is what you recently viewed when you're coming back. And if you can, show personalized products. Personalized products via the cookie, via the login. Once we identify you, if we can't identify you, there's a bit of cookie information. But there's, there's many modern tactics to quickly share. Okay, welcome back, Kevin. Last time you viewed this um, mm, rifle scope. <laughs> right. Important. Work with your UX team. When you build your pages, five minutes later, you can answer all those questions, right? And you can do this actually yourself, but again, we can consult with you. Um, very important, the category page. Um, and we have so many internal fights on, on how sometimes we ne neglect the importance of this listing page or category page. So if we, if we link this back to retail, these are all the shopping aisles and you need to think carefully how you cluster, how you group, how, how, how you bundle your shopping aisles, right? It, it, should be, it should be well thought out. So what is the mindset of an online customer? Very, very similar to when you walk into a physical store, you scan all the oh, aisle six electrical cable, I find it there. So the mindset is, I, I, I know more or less what I want, but, but give me direction, guide me. Um, on, on the category page, right? 
Another type of mindset is uh, show what I'm looking for or, or allow me to ask questions. Now that allow me to ask questions is, is, is more for your consultative sales. You walk in into a bookstore, there's 10 million titles. You want to find uh, maybe some uh, inspirational books uh, or, or, or business leadership books. You will need to engage. You will need to, to ask a few questions. I mean, you need somebody very clever to guide you. So those are typically the two mindsets. Uh, yes, I know more or less what I want, but, but guide me. Or I am here now. It's, it's a vast range. Allow me to ask questions. How do we, what type of solutions do we then cater for? Guys, so, so many times we go to listing pages, right? Um, I'm looking for shampoo. I know typically um, what is the best selling shampoos and, and the first eight products above the fold are all shampoos to do with color, coloring your hair. And, and I typically know by mining the sales data, looking at the page views, looking at, at, at the units sold, these are not the best sellers. So just a little bit of work on, on top sellers or recommended for you uh, or um, um, recommended by, by our top consultant, most viewed. All of these, well, what is new in the category? And, and we should really merchandise that, not only in position, right? But, but we should shout the value, guys. This is great value. This is on promotion. This is definitely a top seller, which means something. This, this is brand new in the range. This is last in range. Um, and I'm gonna show you tactics on, on how to do this in Magenta. Um, everybody is aware of a badge manager and the product rules in Magento, and it's as easy as that. To work the attributes, to bulk upload the attributes if you're not getting a feed, and then just to make it nice and visual. Right, product page. This is where we start to, re to merchandise for revenue. What is the mindset? I'm keen on this, right? Um, I'm, I'm really considering this. I'm, I, I, I'm deep diving in, into the research. But, but at the same time, we also say, what else? I'm keen on this, but what else can I consider? Now I must give compliments. Most of our merchants, all of you guys, are getting better with um, what we call upselling. You should never downsell. So upselling here is just showing alternatives, right? So the product detail page, this is where we show alternatives. Um, the theory says only on the shopping cart do we should we show complementary. Um, so, so I'm a 50-50 on this one. On, on what the theory is saying, but, but definitely we, we should always create an open-ended type of buying journey. Open-ended in terms of, I'm considering this, but this looks better. And you can just over time be in that loop of more consideration, more consideration. So similar products, upsells, um, viewed and also bought. Again, uh, Magento functionality and a bit of AI, uh, great. Uh, recommendation in terms of other people normally pair this complete the look or related products the lowest hanging fruit we can do um, on on the product detail page but what what this template presentation template didn't allow me to do is, is to add more options otherwise I, I would have lost a little bit of balance on the slide what did i say in the previous slide yeah if I'm showing interest in this particular product, to then have a, a group option, typically a, a group product in Magento means um, there's multiple products and you can select what you want in the group. And then a bundle product is the same, but you can have further configurations per product. So configurable products within a group. I'll show you an example now. <laughs> so bundle and group. If I'm on this page and I say, ah, oh, this product I'm looking for is part of a bundle and I can actually get some more value by, by taking my whole bundle. Done and done. When we move to the shopping cart, what is the mindset? I'm going to do this now. Watch me, right? And all we need to do is keep me on track. 
do not give me friction do not disturb me do not confuse me keep me on track because i'm going to do this now so typically what we in terms of more merchandising uh, the cross sells so these are more, more of the complementary products never never alternatives complementary products and and like we see in, in in any physical store is the snake aisle the best general seller uh, typically of a low hanging fruit it's it's typically a cheaper item and we know yeah and we know um the likelihood of somebody just adding quickly to the basket that that will be done and again when we show examples you will see it's it's not taking you back into the shopping journey it's not taking you back to a product detail page it's on the cart i'm going to do this now i just add it to my uh, to my trolley or to my basket and i check out right so let's take 2 minutes for questions i see this there's a, um, a few questions coming through steph yeah i think i think there was so many valuable points raised i think uh, if there are any questions now i'd like to open the floor just for a couple of questions Yeah, take over time. I actually don't want to do too much product. <laughs> Move you slow. Now I'm joking. We'll jump into product. Is there anyone with any any question? Seems, Seems not. not. Okay. okay. Let's oh, here we go. Azola, how is it to create bundled products? I'm going to show you now, Azola, how how to create a bundled product. Um, it. If if I skip this when when I do a bit of product, just just shout. Right, right. Let's continue. Um. So guys, I'm I'm gonna now jump into Magento Admin. Um. Again, it's this is not training. We only have fifteen minutes left. So I'm gonna show you. quickly what is a product relation sorting options uh, banners and 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 right and typically these are the things you, you you do manually in in magento okay can can we also follow my screen Uh, Steph, it's all good on your side, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me make it. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Please don't hesitate to add all your questions. Um, we'll answer them at the end as well. Right. So, 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 guys, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on two engagement pages where we merchandise for engagement. That's a little bit manual on on any landing page or start page. and then typically it's our listing page or we call it categories right so let's start with categories now i'm going to jump into let's say no let me take main stops and uh, tees okay um the products in categories so so uh, this is not the training on how to set up a category and how to do content management on, and and all of that but what what are the low hanging fruits when it, when it, when it comes to categories firstly this is what we call um the visual merchandiser so this is basically the order of how you'll see the products and we all know you can move products around so i know this little blue uh, tank top is is going to sell better than the black so so very easy to manually manually override the position and this is what we call positions right now very good practice unfortunately it takes a bit of code the very first thing you should do on on your category pages and make a note of this get somebody at vimo to 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 rename this word this shouldn't be position it because it means nothing uh, for for the customer actually right so so call that recommended or call that um um um, um trending uh, in, in our store 
But this is unfortunately a super attribute and, and you cannot yourself as an end user override the label here. But any other, um, if we jump into men, tops, tees, uh, all your other sort positions, this you can by default uh, maintain. So these are all attributes. You can set every attribute to be part of your, 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 your sorting order of this page. So very important, first tip, do not use position, it means nothing. Use recommended or, or, or um, recommended for you or best sellers or trending um, in the business. Anything but position. So, so that's, that's quite important, right? Um, another thing, we can set the listing order on, on any category page with automatic sorting. So by default, it, it will look at the position we set here. So these positions typically come from the ERP or somebody in admin overrides these positions or we import, bulk import this, right? But you can override this with an automatic sorting rule. And what Magento allows us to do, we can say low stock to the top. And, and these options grows with every version update with a new option. If, if you need a specific query, we will write the query and make it as smart as you, as you can, um, or as you want it. But you can typically move out of stock to the bottom. You, you never want out of stock at the top. It's, we need to think about that first eight positions. This is where we merchandise for revenue. A special price to the top. Uh, me as a customer, the first thing I do when I get to any listing page, I say, show me promotions only. This is how we shop Woolies. This is how we shop most stores, right? Uh, take a lot. I first want to see what's on special. Who doesn't like a good special or a good promo? Especially now. Yeah. <laughs> so first products and uh, newest products first. So Magento is clever enough to understand what is the database record? When was this record created in the Magento database? And by default, it will say, okay, this, this is, is newer than that one. So it will always put the newest products at the top. <laughs> so these are all rules you can, you can, you can work. With worst case scenario, you basically set your positions itself. Then you can also say, hang on, thank you for the hard coded rules, but um, building, taking this category and actually tagging and bringing products into this category, um, instead of doing a lot of admin work and, and finding a few products and then moving it to a category or the ERP telling us, these products should belong to this category. Uh, you, you can basically select any attribute on your product. Now, I'm coming from a position where, where, where I assume you understand what is a product attribute. Product attribute is just a bit of information in, on the product. It's kind of um, endless what you, what you can add and how you can configure this. And every time you add a bit of information to a product, you can say use various attribute to automatically link this product to, to a category. So we, for example, can say all products where, um, uh, product, let's say for example, product name uh, contains, let's say tank tops. So, so, and then it will take all tank tops and move it into the specific category. This is what we call, um, automated categories, right? And you can do multiple conditions. You can say, not just product name, but it can be color or brand. You can use any attribute and a combination of attributes with a logic of either or, and you can bolt your categories automatically. Then you can, then you can sort your, um, your categories either manually, or you can do it with automatic rule. Right, so guys, this is, this, this is, I'm going to say 40% of online merchandising, what I'm showing you here. We must get smarter with this. Now I'm going to just quickly answer Zola's question. And I'm going to take a bundle product. So we've set up a dummy bundle product. Let me show you what, it, what a, a bundle product uh, looks like. So, the call to action is customize and add to cart. This will take us to, there's, 
uh, a sprite ball with a yoga brick, with a yoga strap, and a foam roller. So this is a bundle. And within the bundle, we say, okay, you can choose the size or whatever configuration we say. So the, the user experience, we say, take the whole bundle, and typically there's a bit of value. Now, this is the, under, the most underutilized merchandising tactic across all our clients in South Africa. It, it, it's, it's really heartbreaking. Um, so, so when you, the front, front end experience, you toggle through your options and you add all of this to cart. And in my cart, all my details as per my selections are there. Now you check out. So, how do we set this up, Azola? Um, every product in Magento, and again, so if the category configuration and working all the functionality on the category, that is 40% of online merchandising. The remaining, here's another 50%, which I'm showing, which I'm going to show you here. Um, so Magento will allow you to, to set up a bundle item. And here you can just add options. Uh, add the options in terms of a different um, products, the other SKUs you want to bundle. So it's a bit of training on YouTube. There's a five minute, uh, uh, minute video. Let's make sure we circulate this, this training video on, on how to set up bundle products. But you can go, you can even say, you can browse the whole catalog. You can choose options out of a whole catalog. And this is what we call a hard bundle where the, the kit actually gets its own skew. And this skew comprise, comprises out of multiple sub skews which we, which we set up here. Right? Then, if you're going to do this manually, there's two ways to do related products, upsells, cross-sells in Magento. It's the manual way. So manual means either somebody click, click, click here in admin, or we import this from, from another system. If you want to add related products, again, you just say add related products. The whole catalog opens. You browse the catalog. You say, okay, I want to relate these products. And Magento by default will display that on the front end for us. So how does it work? Um, if I take this used duffel bag, um, these are all, Okay, this is actually um, upsells, but um, it's, it's, it's the same mechanism for related upsell and cross-sell. So if I take this SKU in admin now, I'm just gonna uh, actually, uh, not, not there. So, so what we're seeing on our front end, guys, and I do apologize for the advanced Magento users, uh, but we, we wanted to show a bit of product. So all of these products are being pulled from your setup here in admin. So you, you went to the duffel bag, either via import or, or manually going into um, the upsell products. And here we've just tagged all the other duffel bags. As, as upsell products. The same principle will apply to adding related products and cross-sell products. What are the difference between cross-sell products and upsell products? Cross-sell is available in the shopping cart. Upsell will by default expose on the product detail page. The same with related products, product detail page. So by doing this manually or via import, on your detail page, you're gonna create an open-ended shopping journey. I'm considering the main product, but hmm, here's some, here's some alter, uh, alternatives. Now, of course, this is a lot of work, tons and tons of work. So Magento has created a rule where we can automatically pair related products, upsell products, cross-sell products. And for those of you familiar with shopping cart price, price rules, you will understand the power of uh, related product um, rules. So if you're not going to tag that manually or import and, and build your product relations, you can do it rule-based. 
Um, so, so here, for example, under marketing, if we go to related product rules, I will open an existing product rule. You set, you set your, your, your static config. You're going to say, uh, this is actually a, re a related rule I want to set up. Then again, the conditions are endless. So you can use any combination of product attributes and categories. Um, so you build your combination, and again, the operators is 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 not always is undefined. Products to match, match and then which products to the, to display. Um, so so basically, what what this engine will do, if if I say related watches, I'm going to say, build me an automatic rule for for watches that where the brand is the same, and the price is more than the the primary product I'm viewing, right? And display this on all watches with a certain brand value. Okay, so, so let me go through this slowly. So typically, uh, you set the rule con conditions, the products to match. You're gonna say, okay, which other products should, should, should be tagged to my primary product? You're gonna, for example, select any uh, combination of an attribute. Let's say, for example, where um, the style uh, is one of, let's say, duffel, right? And you can do some, some nested conditions as well. And then the products to display, here, here we set match product activity or constant value. So it's either dynamic when you when you on a, another duffel bag, it will display the rules you, you're defining here, or you can set it for these specific SKUs only. And what will happen when I go to my duffel bag, all of these products, instead of tagging this manually, like I've shown you, the auto rules will kick in and display all duffel bags with a style where the price is more than $34. Okay, so that's another 30%. So now we are at 70% of merchandising, right? Um, any questions so far, guys? Okay, so sorting labels, I've sh uh, we've spoken about. Sorting positions um, on the category, we, we show you where, where you can do sorting positions. Um, product relations, I've quickly gone into the manual way of tagging, tagging to the product and also the rule-based auto relations. Banners, um, um, so let, let me quickly jump into banners, fixed widgets and, and CMS page builder. So these are the manual ways on, on how to merchandise. Typically this is a landing page or a start page. Right, now, Let's, let's, this is a demo store. This is a banner. We all know you can, you can in, inject a banner and you can create a link or an entry point. So if somebody clicks on this banner, it will enter you into the site or something. All of this, right? Sometimes we don't apply enough thinking. Um, it, the right collection of products, the, the right value. Um, above the fold, nicely styled, the right call to actions. And, and then we make sure we, we create that funnel properly. But guys, all of these are banners and, and, and content blocks. This is another hot feature to merchandise. I'm gonna show you now. For example, out of a box, Magento can, can list your top five hot sellers, right? Not necessarily at the right space, but this is just a demo. We can show, um, some some are, um, are recommended products. We can show some personal selected products which we which we feel should feature here. So this is now by SKU, which you can just inject. Uh, I'm just showing you. you. You can do it by by name uh, by by um, sorting by name. Uh, this is now all default. You can have selected SKUs, um, ascending, descending, low stock. And of course, you shouldn't use these labels. This is just what, what we've set up for the demo. 
high stock, price high to low, um, and, and so forth. So effectively in Magento, many, many ways to do this, but ultimately it, it's, it's content and uh, content blocks and um, yeah, for example, you can inject a sales block. I'll just show you. Um, and add content. So this is not training, this is not CMS training, but once you understand how to, how to use the store, you can inject any dynamic block or products widget on any page in the journey or most pages. What is a dynamic block? A dynamic block in the Magento world means you have logged in, I know whom you are. So I will not show you the same CMS block. I will not show you, show you the same banner. I will, because Kevin is logged in and we have created some segmentation rules around Kevin, I will, I will see content that's, that's personal to me, right? Or you can just put product widgets and, and um, all the product widgets. Why does it not, I'm not gonna enter. Uh, one moment, got a website. Okay, see, this is why you shouldn't do demos. Uh, just, just get the one on, on. But yeah, you add product uh, widgets, and the product widgets on offer is kind of neat. Um, it's all pre scripted uh, logic blocks. And it, it will mine the catalog and just put those products on the start page, on a landing page, uh, on a, a product detail page, in a blog. Right. So, so, so this is the area where we can kind of just go to town, uh, the content area with new landing pages. Then we insert blocks, dynamic blocks and widgets. Okay. okay. Kevin, what we might do afterwards is same, same training video as with bundle products. We'll just uh, okay. provide a link for that. So, 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 so what we can do is incorporate um, the training videos as part of us. Like I said, we, we, it's not a training session. It's just a show and tell at the end of the day. Right, so, so guys, this is banners, fixed widgets, and, and, and CMS page builder. Uh, last night, I basically created this, this whole demo page with, with all my blocks and, and uh, my, my product widgets, and you can insert them anywhere. And this is what we actually should be doing on a daily basis. So these are typically the manual grinding and, and hard work in, in Magento. But, but once, once you start to move deeper into the product, you can also just configure once off your auto categories. I've shown you visual merchandiser, uh, the related products, Batch manager is the same, um, it's, it's a rule-based engine. So you can say if this brand and this product range and this product type sh show um, the brand badge or the promotion brand or the trending badge or the um, hot seller badge. Very important, um, very important to start pushing business, to start pushing the merchandisers into making use of group and bundle products. You, you will instantly improve conversion and average order value. Um, and, and the same with making sure that it's, it's, there's some auto setup or some curation that has happened with related cross sells and upsells. Um, so we're out of time, so I'm not gonna jump into product here. Um, we will share some more content as part of this um, webinar, which we will publish. So guys, in, in summary, in conclusion, some further considerations for online merchandising. Typically we forget that there's two states. There's a logged in state and a logged out state. Um, if you have mileage and, and capacity to merchandise for logged in, now you're starting to personalize. Personalization is the next phase of e-commerce. We've been talking this for years. I mean. We yet to really get personalization going um, um, in, in, in our market. 
but with the likes of a Nosto and a bit of a Clevu and a bit of AI, we are getting there. But I think we can achieve so much more with manual merchandising for logged in state for, for Kevin. And that starts with customer segmentations. Customer segmentation is very important, guys. Um, in marketing, in the marketing uh, uh, module, uh, there is a section for client segmentation. Oh, it's not here. Oh, sorry, it's actually in clients, segments. And quickly, what is a, is a customer segmentation? It's again, it's a rule, it's a condition which you, you create. So, so you can create a condition for date of birth. You can create a condition for um, address, for how much, um, uh, you can create a condition for sales amount. So create a segmentation for all clients that has placed an order with us to the value of 10,000 and more. In Gauteng, right? Which has bought a product across a certain um, listing or a certain product category. What the system will then do based on, on the condition you define, it will return a list of clients that meets that condition. So it will say, these are the clients that has placed an order for more than 10,000, but lives in Gauteng, and the product was in a specific product category. Creates that segmentation for you nicely, and um, now you can merchandise, you, you can actually create content, banners and static blocks for that customer segmentation. So when any, anyone logs in, meets the qualification of our segment, boom, the merchandising experience changes. They're very powerful. Um, so that logged in, logged out state. Very an important consideration. Can I add from card from a listing page? A, a lot of our clients, there's no need to go to the detail page. So all you're thinking, your product experience, your product info must be good enough from a category page just to add to cart, especially FMCG, the likes of a disk game, and, and, and. Responsive content. We all fail at responsive content. Um, responsive content is your blocks, your widgets, your banners. That it creates a good enough user experience from a mobile phone. Uh, typically, we just resize and it's, it's not great. Um, mapping versus curating, what, what do I mean here? Curating is, is where somebody with a lot of industry and business knowledge pairs products together. Sometimes you need to do it. So I'm going to say a fair gauge is 10% should be curating versus 90% should be automated mapping and, 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 and rules. Right? Don't forget the props. So it's the eye candy. If you, if you walk past the storefront, typically you know, how they style it and how they make up the props and how they dress and how they compare, it's beautiful. It generates the interest. We do not do these online anymore. Uh, it, when we started e-commerce, a lot of focus went into, into how, how beautifully we actually prop uh, uh, the mer with merchandising. We don't do it these days. We should go back to the basics. And because there's not enough hours in a day, um, typically we just take what, what feeds the e-commerce engine. And there's not a lot of planning and organization and thinking, um, but goes into especially our listing pages, position one to eight on any category page. Get that right and you will improve conversion with, with two ticks out of the box. Here's just some main considerations for, for our online merchandising, the basics again. Um, the how-tos and the training, all of this I can assure you is possible in Magento. Yes, you will need our help. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. Sometimes we need to, to fight all the automated crimes in the back end, but we'll get it right. And ultimately, this is our goal. Just to get, to get the, 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 right the right product, product in front of a client with the aim to improve uh, the chances of that customer actually buying it, the product from us. Thank you so, so much, much, Kevin. Kevin. Um, I think that's, that's a lot of information for us. Um, are there any questions, questions at this, this stage? stage? It's not. Guys, Guys thank, thank you for your time. time. Um, what, what did we want to achieve? Every three weeks, we're running a, a local webinar. We, we, we did 
uh, on-site search. We did now on-site merchandising. We're following with Google, Google, shopping. Shopping. Google shopping. Fantastic. Then we're going to do omni-channel. Then we're going to do a frictionless cart experience. So, so every three weeks, there's a power topic, one hour on a Friday. Um, please continue to, to, to join us and to dial in. Thank you so much, and Kevin. I hope this was, was an hour worth spent, spent on, on your Friday, Friday morning. I think it was, definitely. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, any, questions any questions can also be directed to me. Um, you can send your questions directly, directly to my email address. I will always uh, be available for you guys on there. And I'll also share that after the webinar. Um, there will be a post-webinar server, server that will be sent out to everyone to just get an idea of what you thought and your opinions and uh, what we can do better and what you'd like to, talk, uh, to hear us talk about. So thank you very much, Kevin. Um, I think so, that's us. So, so basically, uh, my, my, my little sum and dance, I've mapped out in a mind map and, and we'll also share this little mind map, which you can just print out and you can just say, okay, here's the tactics, here's where I need to consider, these are the channels, uh, these are what I should be measuring, these are the functionalities available in the product. So just a little mind map, very rough, um, but it can be of value. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I think that concludes our webinar for today. Um, we'll see you shortly with Google Shopping. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.